Hold up, it's a pool cover roller. Welcome back to Chef's Harvest Farm. I'm a former executive chef turned urban farmer, and today I'm going to show you how I efficiently protect my garden from frost using my Agrabon Rollmaster, which is actually just a pool cover roller. Let's go check this out. Come on. it up and then you can just move the whole thing and then attached to the fence is a hoop bender that I got from Johnny's selected seeds I've tried lots of different methods for low tunnels and ways to protect my garden so this year I was really fortunate that I was blessed with a USDA low tunnel grant it's a new program from what I understand I might have been the first person to actually get it. I don't know if that meant like in the state of Tennessee or in Knox County, but I would imagine the program is available all over the country. So they gave me $1,500 grant to cover 300 square feet, which is plenty of money. These are three quarter inch pieces of electrical conduit that I just purchased at Lowe's. And these are really rigid, they'll last forever. So they come straight, you gotta bend them. So I bought this hoop bender from Johnny's Selected Seeds. And this is what they call their four foot hoop bender. So it bends a four foot hoop. These are 10 foot pieces of electrical conduit. I believe the four foot means like four feet tall so that you could have like a four foot tall hoop, not four foot wide. But regardless, I'll show you how to use the hoop bender. It's really easy really straightforward and then you can kind of uh, make the hoops like whatever size however width you need them to be you could even make it so it covers two beds and I might try that today and I'm also not sure if we're gonna like pound uh, rebar into the ground and slide this over the rebar or if I'm just gonna be able to stick this in the ground I was also thinking about like possibly sharpening the edges to make them sharper so they can go in the ground I've never actually used this method before um, but it's a really common method that market gardeners use to cover their crops. So to bend the hoop, it's got like this, it's, this is just a fence. I attach it to the fence. You can attach it to a tree. I've seen people do it with picnic tables, anything you can attach it to, so it's not gonna move. And there's just this little stir up here, and that's where you stick the hoop. And then you just bend it right over. And I've seen people make uh, their own hoop benders. This thing was only like $120, but it was paid for with my grant money. I would, I, I, it's worth $120. Even if I didn't have grant money, I would have bought it. So you stick the um, piece of conduit just right in that stirrup, and then you just bend it down and it just guides you. It's just two pieces of, uh, chain link fencing top rail and then the the conduit fits right in between it's real easy it's not hard to bend and you just put it back through and bend a little more and that's it and now I've got this hoop it's super rigid and it'll last forever uh, you can see it's like not a perfect bend, but you can of course go back and bend it some more. But then like the cool thing about these is they're just flexible, but really rigid. So I can make it wider to cover two beds if I want, or I can just go like this and make it taller to cover one bed. So now I'll show you how we install the hoops. Let's go check it out. After a little bit of trial and error, because I've never actually used this method before, so I've seen where people just like take the hoops 
and they can just go and stick it right into their soil. But that didn't work good for me. Uh, I'm working on pretty heavy packed clay, but I just could not get these things to just jam down into the ground no matter how hard I tried. I like literally put all my weight on it to the point that I was about to break it before it actually went into the ground. So I just like took the hacksaw and tried to cut it like at an angle and kind of point the thing so then maybe I could get it into the ground. But that also only bought me a little bit of uh, more room into the ground and then it was like really flimsy. So I just felt like if it got really windy or if any snow or anything like that, the, the things would definitely have just collapsed. They weren't sturdy. My third option was to pound rebar in and then we're just going to slide these over. So I got my buddy Don helping me today. You can see him in the background. He's just... Um, He's getting all the rebar pounded in and then and then the hoops will just slide right over the rebar and it's like works pretty good but it's not perfect like it doesn't go on super easy okay so there we go we got it in super rigid i mean it's not the easiest task to set this up by any means but like that's not going anywhere uh that's going to hold support and and I'm happy with that. It would obviously be way more efficient and faster if we could just come through, one person grab one end, the other grab the other, and, and just stick them into the ground by hand. But that's just not our reality today. So I'll speed this up and then you can uh, see what it looks like at the end. So if you don't know what Agrabon is, it's a material made specifically for protecting agricultural crops from frost. What I purchased is called Ag 50. I believe they call it Ag 50 because it only lets 50% of the sunlight penetrate, but it's judged by the weight and the level of frost protection. So Ag 50, the label says that it protects, or it gives you eight degrees of protection, meaning if it's going to be 32 degrees tonight, then under the frost blanket, it's the equivalent to being about 40 degrees. So it gives you eight levels of protection. And then theoretically, if you pull two of the frost blankets over, it'll give you 16 degrees of protection. And you can buy Agrabon in all kinds of different weights, or at least several different weights for different levels of frost protection. I've got Ag 50 here. And it's pretty heavy duty stuff. This stuff will last a long time. Um, typically in the past, I've bought it at places like Johnny's Selected Seeds or Farmer's Friend. But this year I got it from Tarps America. And uh, the only reason I got it there is because it's the only place I could find that sold the size that I wanted. It, I bought a 26 foot long roll and it's 500 feet long so that I could cover multiple beds at once. Because last year, when we got hit with our first frost, or any frosts all winter, it was just a ton of labor to cover crops. It, it would take me all day to cover them. I mean, not all day, but if you gotta set the hoops up and cover your crops, and you're doing it one bed at a time with one person by myself, then yeah, for sure, it can take all day. So this year, I wasn't messing around. I wanted the biggest pieces I could find to cover as many beds at once as possible, especially if I've got a little bit of help, like one person to help me pull this over, we can literally cover multiple beds within seconds. Now, I wouldn't necessarily just go out and buy a 26 foot long roll of Agrabon just because I did. It can be really hard to manage so you can see how big this roll is and it i can't pick it up by myself when i got it i mean i've taken half of the roll off or more than half of the roll off at this point so i can move it but um i have a tractor with forklifts so i was able to manage it with that so you want to take that into consideration when you're thinking about what size you're going to buy but you also want to take into consideration do you actually want to just cover one garden bed at a time because it's a lot of extra work that way and i use this material over greenhouse plastic because it's actually lighter it's easier to move store and it's breathable so if it's going to be cold for several days at once i can just leave the whole 
piece of fabric over my garden and not have to worry too much about it. A little bit of wind will blow underneath and get some air under there, but mostly it's breathable so it won't suffocate the crops like a piece of plastic would. And then the plastic would be much harder to actually manage as well. To actually cut the Agrabon, my garden is all kind of inclined. You can see it goes down the hill this way. And then the house is here. This is a side yard and it's even steeper. So I took the roll of Agrabon in my pickup truck to the top of the hill. And then I just rolled it down the hill with my tractor with the forklift sitting here and just rolled it right into my tractor and then cut 75 foot lengths because all my beds are 50 feet long. So I want to have plenty on the ends to make sure I can cover the whole beds. So you all you want to make sure that you're doing the same. Um, if your beds are 50 feet long, you don't want to cut a 50 foot piece length of Agrabon. It has to be longer because you're going on hoops so it can cover the whole bed. Um, so I rolled it down the hill, cut the 75 foot length and then I drove it back up the hill with my tractor and rolled it back down. So you want to keep those types of things in mind when you're ordering the size that you want. So this is the celery in the high tunnel. Um, it got like 28 degrees last night. I believe, I don't know. I don't even have a thermometer. That's what the weather says. And so I've got those 26 foot wide rolls, pieces of Agrabon, and I got it folded in half. So it's a double layer over the hoops and then all that you know inside the high tunnel and i mean it looks great and it was you know at least 28 who knows it could have gone down to something more like 25 or something like that uh, the carrots here i didn't cover at all you can see the tops have kind of fallen down but i bet by the end of the day they'll spring right back up and then salanova lettuce i just transplanted like two days ago two days before the hard freeze and it's just not phased at all it's a celery bed i mean overall everything's looking really good i just pulled all these frost blankets off um I just didn't record it. I didn't have a camera stand out here or nothing. Sometimes I just gotta get the work done, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, everything looks great. I mean, the Ag 50 down to, um, I mean, it was probably 25 degrees last night here. I mean, everything was white. I mean, complete frost like snow. Um, everything looks great under here. And I really realized like having these sturdier low tunnels, uh, really makes it so I don't really have to open up the whole thing uh, to get it some airflow during the day. I can just kind of flip the ends up and 
I think that's, there's like so much air under there that I think that'll give it plenty of airflow because I just need to close all this right back up. Uh, you know, leave it open for a few hours and then I'm just gonna close it right back up and we're gonna get another frost tonight. And then it's supposed to be back up in the 70s next week. So all this stuff will keep growing and I'm gonna plant more stuff, mostly lettuce and spinach and arugula. This is what I'll be planting this time of year. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep trying to grow all winter as long as I can. <laughs>